Megan Hicks of I Run Far, and I'm here in Kawaguchi Go, Japan. I'm here the night before the 2015 Ultra Trail Mount Fuji. I'm with Lithuanian Gediminas Grinius. Hey. Hey, Megan. How are you doing? I'm actually not bad. You know, I recovered probably from UTMB for 100k, and you know, we'll see what will happen afterwards. Yeah. The last time we saw you was four weeks ago, and you were having a a biblical time at UTMB. Yeah. Tell us about what happened there. Actually, you know, I had a blister, very first time in my life, and it happened just after 20 clicks of a race. You know, you started getting blisters. At first, I didn't know it was a blister because I thought that I got some gravel in my shoes on uh -huh. very fast downhill, and when I approached with uh, Las Contaminas, yeah, 30 kilometers, I asked my wife to check what is wrong with my shoes and I said just put gravel out and she checked and said nothing in and then I noticed a uh, huge blister so I changed the shoes. What, wait, what part of your feet? The toes It was the... very strange, it's uh -huh. here, it's like from here to here, you know, on both, on both soles. Uh -huh. So it was rather strange but I keep going and kind of, you know, could cope with the pain which blisters produced but I was forced to run on my toes or on the front foot. Yeah. And it was okay like when you're running uphill or on the flat. But then the downhill. But downhill, you know, when it's not natural at all, you know, and after a while, like after 130 or 20 kilometers, I killed my quads totally. So my legs felt like wooden legs, you know, and I was just, you know, walking down the hill, a bit running up the hill, but, you know, after a while, in the 151 I decided to drop because it made no sense for me anymore you know I couldn't because the last part would took for me like six hours because of the, yeah before the, the dropping the race like 20 clicks uh, I was just walking yeah. walking 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 and it took me like three hours the last 10 k so yeah. um, are there any takeaways that you learned from that was it socks shoes was it something going on with your hydration or electrolytes have you <laughs> figured it out no, you know, okay. as much as, uh, you know, after the race, of course, I tried to figure out what happened, you know, I looked at the shoes, you know, at the socks, and, you know, all the, you know, I read a few articles, and it's basically just friction crafting, you know, and because of humidity or the heat, that I I was running in the same conditions, you know, like Gran Canaria, yeah. Western States, but yeah. it never happened before, so actually I'm not sure what's wrong, but uh, I'll run uh, tomorrow with the same shoes, just choose the different socks and yeah. I'll apply some cream which I bought which says that it reduce some crafting. And then cross your fingers a little bit, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> have your feet, I mean it must have been pretty severe, your blisters by the time that you dropped out, have your feet healed? It hasn't been that long. Um, actually you can still see, you know, some parts, uh, the damaged parts, you okay. know, the skin is very thin there, so yeah, the skin is still growing, so but I don't think that it will be a problem for me to run tomorrow. Maybe it's just a recovery. You know? Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. So is this your um, first time to Japan? Yeah, it's my very first time to Japan, and I really like you know the the, the, the Japan and the people. They're very polite, too polite maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, food is amazing, and as for runner, the food is like perfect because usually before the races, I'm using a lot of rice, and here it's just rice, 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 or fish, fish, fish. So it's like kind of good cuisine. Yeah, it's just about dinner time on the night before the race. So, what do you think you're gonna have for dinner tonight? Uh, I believe I won't experiment too much, and I'll have a lot of rice, you okay. know, miso soup, probably okay. or something light for my stomach. Okay. Now turning to tomorrow, we just finished with the press conference where they announced some course changes. They're adding a little mm -hmm. bit more running and a little bit less technicality into the race because of the weather and to, I think, protect the trails from getting too muddy or washed out by lots of feet tomorrow. The course is very unique in that it has these mountain sections and then you convert to running sections and then you convert to mountain sections again. What are, you, what are you thinking about the course going into this? You know, it's good that we're adapting the course due to environmental issues and we are protecting the trails, so it's nice things to do, but for me, like when I expected to, to be this call more technical, uh -huh. because on the uphills I'm more strong, I believe, than on the flat running, and like to look at the runners, like Didrik Sondre, they are very fast on the flat, 
because yeah we're running on flat a lot and like brendan my teammate he's fast as well on yeah. the flat even faster than me so for me it works not so good but the changes don't no the changes favor you too no, much no but yeah actually before the race uh, i knew that you know you must run a lot on flat and to do some climbing so i adjust my training and i train a little bit yeah after you can be how much you can train but i train a little yeah. bit on the flat so yeah so i believe it will be okay for me as well now some of the competition that you'll be with tomorrow you've been sort of battling all year long now yeah. you've seen sort of the strengths and weaknesses of your of your competition who do you think you're going to be spending time with in in the different sections of the courses as it changes uh, it's very difficult to predict but i guess that the sondra actually will run like the hell you know like usually he do <laughs> like that you know and and me and Dietrich will stay uh, behind a bit okay and probably will catch sondra at i don't know kilometer 80 70 you know and after <laughs> that we'll run some parts together and, okay yeah but usually you know in the race it's very difficult to predict and brendan i i don't know i run just once with him in Grand canaria so uh -huh. it's I believe he's a stable guy and he tries to keep the same pace all the time, so so it's yeah. And I'm not sure about the other guys because like, like Gary, I see uh -huh. him last time, you know, so yeah, I expected the drop car is running, you know, but I didn't know that he dropped from the race mm -hmm. just because of the back injury, so yeah, because now when they change the course, I believe they're Rob will be my favorite because yeah. it's a lot of flat running where yeah. he's very strong, Yeah. Uh, so yeah. We'll see. Uh, it's very hard to tell, but yeah, if I need to bet, probably the, I'll choose what did with now because he is like recovered from his last race uh -huh. and he's very strong uh, and speedy guy. Didrik's your pick for the win, then? Is that what you say? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think so. Yeah. And okay. if I will keep going with him, I believe I, I'll, I'll have a good place in this race. Okay. So this is my strategy. <laughs> <laughs> you have had quite a year. We've seen you race around the world is this going to be the end of your season now or will you go on to um, grand raid reunion yeah actually when i uh, when i put my plan at first for 2015 i picked all the 100 mile races so the grand reunion is one of it and yeah i have you know everything arranged for that race but mm -hmm. however uh, uh, like my normal life you know was a bit messy and i changed now the countries again from poland to lithuania and i have a new job it's the same in NATO HQ, you know, but just back in Lithuania. And a lot of things will depend on my boss because I still <laughs> didn't ask for a leave. Uh -huh. And after uh, I'll come back from Mount Fuji. Ask I'll, politely for yeah, a little I'll time try off. to ask politely, but it can be because we have, we, this week it's extremely busy in our job. So I hope that he'll let me at least just to fly in to race and fly back. Uh -huh. you know, and so it will be a very... Drop in and drop out. Yeah, exactly. So it will be a very, very, very fast race for me, <laughs> you know, in matters of traveling, yeah. racing and getting back yeah. home. So yeah. yeah, so I'm planning for a new one, but yeah, I still have some doubts. Looking back on, on your year and all the places you've been, that you've been able to race and kind of explore, what have been a couple of the highlights for you? Uh, you mean like in races or...? or yeah, anything. It could be an experience in travel or a mm. moment during your racing. Okay, uh, I don't know. It's quite an interesting thing because like a like few years ago I was just watching other guys racing and from, I'm really very exciting you know to race with them in all these... To be a part of it? Yeah to be part of it you know to be part of the trail running culture and you know the traveling just broaden it my you know my, my me myself you know my wife because usually I'm traveling with family so and the, uh, it's some kind of uh, homeschooling you know for yeah. kids because we are usually out from the school so we are learning everything you know in the hotels or uh -huh. on the spots which we are visiting so it's kind of very productive and very widening uh, you know experience for me and my family and it's like yeah it works for us so I don't know just traveling running and being a part of trail running community it's like this is what I would like to do for the rest of my life you know? so, so it's quite fun. Yeah. 2016, what does it hold for you? Uh, in matters of running? Mm. Or, I don't know, because like 
recently I was asked like three or four times like the same question. What will you do next year? Yeah, what will I do next year? And I actually, I don't know. I have few plans and they are totally different, you know. Mm. I would like to to do Ultra Trail World Tour. It's plan A. The plan B is to do some uh, shorter races just okay. to gain my speed back because I'm feeling that I'm not good now. Uh, I'm not speedy guy, you know, maybe. The leg speed is suffering a little yeah. bit to the mountain running? Yeah, okay. exactly. And another thing which I'd like to do is like Taco FKT. Uh huh. Yeah, which is like now, because when I was in Western States actually, you know, I was staying close to Taco, uh -huh. where my, one of okay. my friends lives, you know, and he just put this idea into my mind. So yeah, if I'll have, you know, everything needed for that, so probably will be my priority and I'll build up all the races around this Tahoe FKT. Okay, yeah. so the, the Killian record that yeah. nobody has yet been able to break since, what was that, 2009? Yeah, Or exactly. 2008 or 9? Nine? 9, I believe, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, this is what I'm aiming, it would be my, you know, my aim and after that just I'll uh, put the race around. Okay, that sounds exciting. Yes. Well, best of luck to you out there tomorrow. Thank you and very much. And keep as dry as you can, right? Yeah, it's probably impossible, but I'll try. <laughs> keep as warm as you can. Yeah, this is a good one. Yeah. Good luck, Edaminas. Thanks, Megan.